Talos Magic Talk Show brought to you by Talos Master G C Food and Team Yet Dragon Talosum. Puriang Tenjon. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. This is your G C Food right here. And today we have a interesting and professional topic, which is uh is talism spell so i know in the western side of magic uh people used to say spell but they are actually doing a whole ritual you know like uh oh let me do a love spell and then they would like do a whole ritual on it not just the the word right but but what we mean by spell here in talism is like a bunch of um words that you will say okay like incantation you know things that you will say Now, how does it work? Why does it work? Uh, and what is the the biggest secret that you don't know, which I'm going to talk about today? And after this lesson, you will, you might be able to understand why I always say, you know, you're like wasting your time trying to dig around yourself because you don't have a master giving you the way you're going to waste your time. You don't know what you're doing. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Ah, so this um, the secret. It's not really a secret. It's more like it's openly it's exposed in plain sight. Everyone can see it, but you just don't see that. This is the key that makes it work, huh? So there's a um, specific line that we always say after the spell. So in Cantonese, is cup cup yuling. In uh, Our language, we like our dialect. We say "keep keep you do ring." Okay, so kind of like Mandarin too. "Keep keep you do ring." Okay, so what is that? That means quick, quick, execute as the commands say. Oh, wait a minute! What command? Yeah, the word that you just said, right? A bunch of word that you just said. Uh, it's a command. So, how does that actually work? Huh. Some people ask me, um, "What is the most powerful spell in Taoism?" What is the you know asking this kind of question is kind of meaningless because I have to say you know like you have a bunch of word you're telling someone to do something. How powerful is that? Well, it depends who you're talking to, <laughs> not the word. Okay, let's say you said clean uh, the washroom, okay, or cook the dinner, and then you add. Quickly execute as my commands say. Okay, <laughs> uh, so who are you talking to? First of all, who are you talking to? A lot of people don't understand how magic works, and they think that it's the spell itself, it's the word itself that has the power. You open the book that is like passed down from thousands of years ago, right? You you read out the word, and immediately like dong dong. And there goes some, like you know, power awakened out of the blue and light shining out of the book, and blah, wow, so many things happening. That's how it is in the movies. Okay, I see a lot of like Western Eastern movies. They have this concept, like the word itself is it's so powerful. You know, you just recite some word, and immediately some special effect kicked in. <laughs> well, that's not reality. Not a surprise, though. You know, like uh, a gunfight in movies is not like how it is in the real life, too, right? And martial art as well. <laughs> so a lot of things in the movies are like fake. You know, they're like the entertainment purposes, right? They're not supposed to be real. The real thing is not exciting. <laughs> so how does it work? What command? Okay. So <clears throat> first of all, magic is an agreement. Between the human and the god, so there got to be a god that you're related to, and the god has agreed to, um, like give you this code as a command, right? It's a code, okay? Like, you know, on the walkie-talkie, they have ten codes, right? Ten four, ten one, right? Uh, like they have a code system, and the code system is understood between. You and the God that gave you the code. So once you dial in 
the channel to connect to the God and you say the code and you add quickly execute as the command say the God will do what that code is supposed to mean. So in real Talus magic, you don't just say the spell. Okay? Because it's like um, you want to say the code, but the other side is not listening yet. No one is listening to you. That's the problem. It's like you want to uh, uh, tell someone to cook dinner, but no one is at home except for yourself. Then who are you talking to? Even you scream in the air, you know, cook me dinner, quickly execute this command. No one is cooking. Why? Because you don't have anyone. <laughs> You're not connected to anyone. Now, how about this? Now you have a phone number. <clears throat> okay? And you dial the phone number. It goes to that someone. And that someone listens to you now. Then you say, cook me dinner. Quickly execute as command. After you said it, the other side understand. Oh, okay, you want dinner. And they come and cook dinner for you. So what is the thing that you're missing? You're, okay, you're missing this special uh, password uh, or like a phone number that calls up the God that you're supposed to get the power and help from. Uh, so <laughs> that's right. You're missing that, okay? Some um, Talus sect, they don't work this way. Um, like, okay, for some Talus sect, uh, including mine here, okay? We have what we call the heart spell, okay? When you get ordained, the God is like put into your body. You have a copy of that God, that power inside you. When you use the heart spell, you can connect to the God, okay? It's like a, a phone number. You can connect to the God. And then you can say any spell to like tell the God what to do for you. It's an agreement. There are some Talus sects, they don't use heart spell. So they rely on something. For example, an altar. They have the God on the altar, right? So if you do magic, you got to go in front of the altar. You talk to the God at the altar. So when you say the spell, it's like telling the God on the altar to do those stuff. So you're still connected to the God because you're in front of the altar where the God is. So the spell will work because the gods are listening. Okay. Um, what if they're like outside? Well, they can have other methods. For example, you have like a, a little pendant that is consecrated at the altar. So the god put a copy of itself in, onto that pendant. So whenever you do magic, you might have to like get contact with the pendant and then you say the spell then that God will also respond to you as well. And that is what makes the magic work. However, if you are not ordained into any sect, like you're just an outsider, nothing will work for you. Because why? There's no God connected to you. There's no God. <laughs> nothing is connected to you. So no one is doing anything to you. No one is doing anything for you. That's why the magic doesn't work. And okay, even the spell say, like on the surface, for example, the spell is like, oh, make me dinner. It's a, it's a code, you know, like, like 10 code, 10 4, 10 1, you know, 101, you know, like you have like 10 codes, right? Like for the walkie talkie. It doesn't mean that they're literally 10 something, it means there's a meaning, right? Okay, so when, um, when you say the spell, the spell might be cook me dinner. But what does that spell actually mean? What is the exact purpose of this spell? Imagine cook me dinner equals to 10-4, okay? So what is 10-4 in your system? Some system may say, oh, 10-4 means I'm going into it. I'm, I'm getting to it. Some may say, oh, 10-4 is equals to, you know, uh, report the weather. Whatever you want to mean, right? So what is the hidden meaning behind the spell? Now, every sect has their own language, own database, own system. Every sect 
is not the same. That is the tricky part about Taoism because every sect is like their own company. They have their own programming language. They have their own source code, right? So everyone has their own meaning for that spell. If you don't know the meaning and you do the spell, <laughs> you got a big problem. Okay, so that's one thing that is like really weird because you might be saying something and you think that it means whatever's on the word, but it's actually not. You have to learn the, the inside, the guts. You have to learn it from your master. When the master teach you when to use the spell, what is this supposed to do for you, that's the meaning. Okay? So if you read it from the books, I'm sorry, it's not on the books. Because by rule, people only pass on the stuff by mouth. They don't teach in the book. And it was like, traditionally, it's not allowed to even be written on books. These are the lineage secrets. You teach by word of mouth only and directly. So, yeah, there will be a lot of people doing magic, you know, newbies. They don't even know what they're doing. That's fine. That's normal. It's normal. But it will still work because they are a disciple. They are learning, right? So it still works for them. Just that their power is not really there yet because they're still a newbie. But once you mature and the, like, the disciple is like grown up, the, the, the uh, master will decide to pass on the secret to them and tell them, hey, you know what? That's uh, what it means inside. And now your magic immediately gets stronger because you have the full version. You have the whole thing right now. You see? Yeah. So the last uh, sentence, keep, keep you reading. Quickly execute as command. This is a very tricky thing. Because there are many versions or variation of this line. For example, um, you can be keep keep you doing. You can be keep keep you do do doing. Like there's a name of something, okay, of a god, of yourself, right? It can be sin pyong ho keep you doing. It has different variation. So, depending on the situation, the whole spell can be the same. Now you can change the ending line based on what you need. Huh. Yeah. So the thing is, um, when we say keep keep you doing, it means quickly execute as the command say. Right? So what God are you talking to? And what kind of command are we talking about? Uh, like, it's just like a, a command that is in the lineage system or is it a command that is stored inside your own system in our lineage we have uh a, like this heart spell and it's like this keep keep you and then your name 10x nuring chia chia ning it has like that ending uh, why is your name in there like quickly execute as no your name a talus name uh command say Oh, what does that mean? It means that this spell runs uh, like you're, you're talking to the power inside your body. And the, the, whole, um, the whole power, the, the thing is like related to the law, the, the rule set inside your body. You know, you're, you're like using the power inside your body, the God inside your body to run the spell. You see, so the the thing is, um, if you see keep keep you your name during right, it's like it's based on the power inside the system inside your body. This spell is not running on the lineage power; it's running on your body's system. So once you decided to lose your faith and not believe. The spell also failed <laughs> because the whole thing is not supported by the lineage. It's supported inside your body. Now, however, for this thing to be in your body, it's also set by the lineage side when you ordain. Okay, so it is given to you, fully given to you, and that's why the power is inside your body, given by the lineage, right? So once the, the disciple lose faith or something, they, they don't believe, whatever, right? So 
they fail themselves, the whole magic fails. Now, so this is、uh, one example. Another example is sometimes there will be a god name. For example, Kip Kip Yu, whatever god, Nuding. So this is like、uh, quickly execute as the ABC god command say. Oh, what does that mean? That means that that god has agreed to use this code for a specific purpose. Once you chant the spell and say "give give you whatever God no name," right? What that means is it's like directly drawing the power from that God. So that God is powering up the whole magic. That God is the one that is giving you the power when you say the spell. And you can't, you cannot just like make it up because the God have to agree. Uh, like before, you actually use it, right? So if the god never agrees and you try to make up a spell, it doesn't work. So the god have to agree and pass on and authorize the spell for the human side, and then the human side record it and say, okay, the god have once agreed to this spell, so we have a spell here, and then the ending change to this, you know. And now, when you say it, the god will agree to it. The god will do whatever you want, right? Whatever your spell is intended for. So there's a lot of like these kind of agreements going on at the back end. It's a very complex thing、uh, about like how a magic system work. You know, it's it's like programming, programming language, a lot of、uh, coding, and like variables and things like that. You know, being set inside the system, a lot of agreements, hidden codes, and things like that. So if you're outside the system, you don't understand, you don't get it. Because it's not open for the public and not for the newbies to look at the code. You learn how to use it as a consumer, right?、Uh, when you're like a newbie, you learn to use it, but you don't learn the coding part. So that's why it's so hard. <laughs>、uh, there's another ending, Xin Bing Ho Kip Yu Ning. That means quickly execute、uh, immediately with your troops with your power. And when we say "sin being ho kip yu ning," it's like you want the god to do it、uh, with a forceful and quick manner. So it's like this is immediate, urgent. You know, urgently need to be done,、uh, and more power is needed to be done. You know, like that. So we have these、uh, endings, and if you like change the ending for the spell, like the whole、uh, bunch of words stay the same, but you change the ending. The whole spell, the power that comes out is totally different. And who, like, who are you asking the help from? Like, are you, for example, I'm like doing the spell in front of my altar. I ask the god at the altar to do this. So I say whatever, whatever spell, and then keep, keep you learning. Right, the altar, like the god at the altar, will do that job for me, which will be stronger. Then when I just use the power inside my body, ah, lots of lots of、uh, fun stuff here, right? You see, just because of that small change, the whole power is already different. But it's not like oh, then you know, whenever I do a spell, I go to my altar. That will be the best way. No, it's not like that. Okay, sometimes you just need a quick job, and you can use the power inside your body as well. And when we say the power inside your body is not like your own energy, it's more like the God that stays inside your body. Then you're like using the power of that God. So you see, Taoist magic is so sophisticated. It's like a whole language, a whole programming language, a whole system. Every sect has their own system. And you only need to know about the system of the sect that you're in. You don't need to know about the others, right? It doesn't matter to you. So, when you want to learn talis magic, the first thing is you need to find a sect to get ordained into, and then you learn in that in that sect, and eventually you'll be able to touch the programming language part, okay? And then you'll be able to understand the inner code and all that secrets that is inside. In our lineage, if you get to like a more mature stage, you will eventually get to the point where you can be the programmer, and you can create 
the new magic and new code as well. Anyway, my timer is up. We'll see you in the next episode.